I'm back, and uh, if you're still alive and following, we're going to implement the final command in this um, quite big application that we've uh, built together. So um, I'm here in the command uh, trait, and uh, I'm going to uh, support the final cat command. So else if cat equals token zero, then I'm going to follow this same logic. Otherwise, new cat with tokens one. Okay, incomplete command with cat and the cat value. I'm going to declare it above. So val cat is going to be the string C A T. All right, and um, I'm going to create the class cat in command. So cat with a parameter. So cat with a file name, which is going to be a string. And this will extend command, of course. And um, obviously, we have to override the apply method, override def apply of a state, which is a state import. And this returns another state. This will be pretty straightforward. So given we're in a working directory, we're just going to cat uh, a file in the working directory. We're not going to support um, relative or absolute paths, although we might as well <laughs> support absolute and relative paths. But for the sake of uh, time and uh, mental sanity for this chapter, we're going to skip it. And you're free to implement this as um, as an improvement into your own uh, implementation. Uh, if you do want to uh, support absolute and relative paths, you can follow the steps of the CD command. And uh, actually, um, most of the logic in uh, a uh, enhanced cat command is going to resemble CD. So you might want to refactor CD into a more general class and then extend CD with a very particular piece of logic and cat with another very particular piece of logic. Um, but um, given we're skipping that, we're just going to support um, displaying the contents of a file uh, right below the current working directory. So uh, basically, we're going to get hold of the current working directory, which is state.wd. And uh, the file name is going to be uh, right below the current working directory. So we're going to create the new or the dear entry, which is wd.find entry with file name. And in case dir entry is null, that means it can be found, or dir entry is actually a directory, I'm going to output something to the console. Otherwise, I'm going to display that to uh, the, uh, display the contents of that to the console. So if dir entry is null, or dir entry is uh, a directory, or actually better than that, not dir entry is file. This is a better way to write it because you might want to support some other types of entities in your file system. Not only files and folders, but maybe drivers, but maybe something else. So um, streams or whatever. So um, this was a better way to write this logic. So if it's not a file, then state dot set message. I'm going to say file name plus colon no such file. Otherwise, um, the dir entry is there and it's a file. So I'm just going to say state set message with the file's contents. So dir entry as file dot um, probably get contents. Content as file and the file thing. Where's file? File is content string. Oh, I can't get hold of it because it's not a val. Okay. Um, it's just otherwise it would be just a parameter to um, 
uh, to the file class. But now I have access to it because it's a field. You remember the difference between parameters and fields, don't you? Okay. Um, and yes, my friends, this would be the entire implementation of cat. I think we're safe to rerun this application because in <laughs> just a couple of minutes we're supporting a new command. So if I'm echoing hello world world to a file, the file is here. And if I do CAT file, yes, I'm echoing hello world. Yes. So the cat command uh, works. And also, if you remember, uh, this is a good way to test that the echo command works as well. So um, let's try to append, for example, echo uh, goodbye, error, arrow uh, file, and CAT file. And uh, voila, we have all the content. Um, if we do echo something else, greater than file, the contents of the file were uh, overwritten, so we um, should be seeing something else now. Cat file. Good, we're seeing something else and we're not seeing hello world or goodbye. Good, so our echo and cat commands work as expected. All right, my friends, this is the end of um, this demo of this pretty big application that we've built together. If you've uh, watched and followed so far, you are my heroes, I'm telling you. Um, because it, it takes a certain level of focus and commitment to actually follow through on this application, but I'm sure you have learned a lot if uh, if you followed along with me. Um, just a few more minutes be before I wrap up, I'm going to suggest a couple of improvements to um, to the architecture of this application, or some minor improvements to um, various pieces of code that uh, we uh, we can uh, definitely improve. So first of all. Just as a small teaser, in command, we're having an extreme amount of if-else branches, if you have noticed. So um, a good way to get rid of that would be to use a powerful skull features that we haven't really talked about yet. And uh, we're going to expand it in chapter, uh, in, in chapter 4 when we deal with pattern match. Um, and the way that we do pattern match is the following. So um, we're going to say tokens zero, which is the subject of the if else branches, match. And then we're going to put in a number of branches as cases. So case mkdir, and then an arrow, and then the logic for this branch. Uh, so command X. Case LS. So the way that this um, pattern match expression works is that this thing is a pattern match expression which returns a value. And each of the cases can return and should return a value. And the whole match expression will return the value for which this argument matches the case guards. So if token zero is uh, or matches mkdir, then this branch will be evaluated and the value of this branch will be the value of the entire pattern match expression. Okay, so this is pretty straightforward and uh, we expand a lot more on pattern match in section four, but this is just like a teaser for you. Um, the way that we want to use pattern match here is to just eliminate all these annoying if else branches. So I'm just uh, putting in um, a few here so that you uh, um, know how, uh, how it works. So uh, we can do the same for PWD, touch, CD, RM, echo, and so on and so forth. I'm, I'm just going to undo everything. 
but um, just uh, bear in mind that this pattern match expression is much more powerful and much more readable than all of these annoying if-else branches that we've um, piled up along the way as we've implemented this uh, pretty huge um, assignment. So I'm just going to undo everything. But just so you know that the pattern match expression is there and it's incredibly powerful if you want to take a look at it. Another thing that I would like to suggest is the fact that command as a trait is just a transformer from a state to another state. So command has this def apply method with uh, which receives a state object and returns another state object. Now this um, the idea here is that the trait command can be thought of as a function in the sense that uh, in much the same way as functions uh, have apply methods, the trait command also has the apply method. So uh, it, this command trait can be thought of to extend the function type from state to state. And the way that we write this is like this. State arrow state is the function type from state to state. We discuss function types and um, um, functional interfaces or functional traits in the functional programming chapter. This again is a little bit of a teaser and um, given that the command extends state arrow state we don't need to um, uh, define the apply method because functions already have the apply method implemented on them. The third thing that I wanted to suggest and fix is uh, in the file system um, main object and it's the var thing that I wanted to fix. So uh, for all of us functional programmers, vars are something that we avoid as much as possible. And the way that we uh, avoid vars is by uh, processing states in a functional way. So let me show you how to do that. Beware this is pretty advanced, but I'm pretty sure you'll get the picture. So I'm just going to comment these out and then I'm going to delete them entirely. And um, I'm going to give you the alternative to reading line by line in an infinite loop. So uh, there are um, utilities in Scala and in general in functional programming languages that will give you all the um, input uh, lines from the uh, standard input as a uh, infinite collection, as a stream. But you don't really care about that. You only care that the lines are in some kind of collection that you can process one by one. So the way that we do that is by using what we call a source. So the way that we create the standard input source in Scala is by using IO source, which uh, is a uh, special object. Um, and we say std in. This is the standard input source. Get lines. This is an iterator of string. See, it's a uh, possibly infinite collection, but you only care that it's an iterator. So get lines. Now, and now we're going to call a special function that we call fold left. And this guy does a very special thing. Let me exemplify. So if you have a collection that says 1, 2, 3, and 4, and you want to compute the sum of all these numbers, the way that you would apply fold left is by running, um, by starting with um, a beginner's value and then add all the numbers to it, right? Now, the way that fold left works is that you start with your beginner uh, value and then you apply an operator with the first element and you obtain a new value and then you use that value to apply the same operator with the second item in your list and then you obtain a new value and then you use that value to run the same operator operator with the third element and then you return you get
get a third value. And finally, use that to apply the same operator with your final element and you return your last value, which is 10. So fold left receives a beginner value and a function to apply and it's and it packs the elements in the list or in your collection one by one until you obtain your final value. And the way that we call fold left, for example, in this case, in this very simple um, uh, addition uh, or number calculation is by saying list one, two, three, four, fold left, starting from zero, and then passing another um, argument, which is our operator, which is x, y, returning x plus y. If you're familiar with lambdas, this will be pretty readable. If you haven't uh, encountered lambdas yet, um, don't worry. Uh, we will get, we'll dive a lot into functions and anonymous functions in the following chapter. But just so you know, or just so that your uh, intuition is prepared, fold left starts with a value and applies operators, and it packs all the elements in your collection one by one. Okay, so this is what happens with all the lines that you enter in the console, right? So we will start with a beginner uh, state here, which is state with root root, which is the completely beginner state, the completely uh, <laughs> empty, um, wiped clean uh, file system, and then we're going to pack the state with a line. So the state with a line and returns a new state. And then this new state with a new line will return a new state and so on and so forth. So we're gonna pass in current state and a new line. And we are going to return a new state. which is this guy. Command from line, apply current state. Command from new line. Okay, and uh, we're also going to say current state dot show because we want to print out the, uh, the current state of the world. And um, we are going to return new state. Or if we don't want to reuse new state, we might just return that expression. So this is the elegant functional programming way to um, getting rid of stateful applications or stateful uh, way of managing things. What have I done? Okay, so I'm just gonna delete these lines and um, just hope that this fold left intuition at least uh, at a high level made sense to you. For all of those who have encountered functional programming before, this uh, will seem a little bit more familiar. And um, if you don't um, know <laughs> functional programming yet, don't worry, don't worry. And uh, feel free to get back to this explanation once you've gone through the um, the functional programming chapter, okay? So uh, this is the nice way to eliminate VARs and uh, that, my friends, will be uh, my end for this file system application. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I did because I've had a blast uh, working this with you. Uh, if you followed along and followed through and implemented this and uh, fixing the errors along with me, you are awesome, you rock. I appreciate it so much. Um, thank you for watching and following through. By the way, I'm going to attach the completed project to this video. And I'll see you in the next chapter because we still have work to do. Until then, you rock.